Hello everyone, welcome, welcome back. I missed you. Today we're going to be doing episode 4 of our Tectonica playthrough. I won't say it, you know what I was going to say. Uh, we're going to go check out this new location, see what we can find there, and try to knock some of these things that we need to do off of our list. And without further ado, let's get right into it. Looks like we're going to have to follow the river. See where it leads us. Ooh. Did I mention that this game is just gorgeous? I see some scannable stuff. High voltage cable technology acquired. All right, let's keep going. So I'm pretty sure the place I need to go is right here. And I think I'm going to dig through right here. Look, I know it's getting old, but this game is beautiful. It really is. Dewcatcher. Got some Shiverthorn. Very cool. Well, let's go see what we can see. What's that? There's a bunch of it. Oh, I gotta scan this. Why can't I scan it? Dang it. They're like jellyfish hanging from the ceiling. That's gorgeous. Well, we found our spot. Hmm. Time to dig a hole. Door unpowered and secured. Okay, well, um... Don't see another way in there. We're just gonna have to build a crank generator real quick and... Open it up. Power restored. Big door. I see lots of things to scan. Lights. Very nice. Oh, let's see what we can see. Jetpot. A warehouse. I knew that gigantic door was a good sign. Scan this place for some basic electrical machines. Especially those planters and threshers on the racks. And pick up anything else you can find. Okay. 
New tech, filter inserter. Nice. Monorail system. Interesting. Looks like we got some Mark II conveyor belts and some filter inserters. Nice. Halfway towards blue cores. Atlantum ingot. Interesting. Lots of good tech fragments here, but I doubt we'll find anyone to rescue. People would take what they needed and get back out there. Crank generators, and looks like we got accumulators. And planters have been unlocked. Pressure tech available. It's a whole other room over here. Requires processor units. 40 of them. Hmm. Task inbound. Supply facility access door with self repair materials. Tier 4 technology required to manufacture. I see. Look through the window breaker. I can literally see the mining charge tech fragment on that table. What kind of miserable bureaucrat puts high explosives behind a securely locked door? <laughs> you think we would be here if we didn't know what we were doing? I, I want you true. to fix that door as soon as possible. I want you to blow things up. Okay. Uh, I guess we're both on the same page about that. I'll get right on it. And we got more of them Atlanta ingots. Mm, got an achievement. Cold cut. Awarded for enhancing the mole with use of coolant. Mole temperature calibrated. Auto injection of coolant standing by. Okay. Probably increases the speed. All right, I think that's everything. We're going to have to, uh, Upgrade that computer so that we can get the next level of technology so that we can do what we need to do But for now There's a whole huge area over there that just begs to be explored hmm. Let's see So I'm looking at my map and I think the next thing that I want to go for is this little green dot right here so we got our new upgrade to our mole let's see if we can dig down to that So it looks like it just automatically uses the coolant, and I really don't want it to do that. Uh, I want to save the coolant. Mm, we are going to head back and drop this coolant off in a chest. So I'm just going to use this chest that's by our main little console here. Uh, I think I'm going to drop a bunch of stuff off. All of that. What's this? Soil. That. God, 
I gotta crank all the. We, no, you know what? Hold on a second. Uh, energy. Crank connect. Let's see if this does what I think it does. Oh, maybe it didn't. Okay. Oh no, it did! They're all connected! Okay. What's wrong with you? Okay, so let's, uh... Oh, I put them all away. Mm. Hang out for a minute, I'm gonna grab another one of these so that I can dump everything into here. And we'll be right back. Okay, we're gonna throw this right and on the edge here, and then we're going to need one of these, there, and we're going to fill this with all of that and all of that. I should automatically repopulate with what it needs, I believe. We're getting a good chunk of these. All right, now let's head back. All right, it looks like it's giving me some kind of warning, zero coolant, but it's still gonna let me use. Okay, that's all we needed. Let's take a look where this, okay, so this thing is sort of down and almost right in front of me. Let's see what we can get. Found it. Okay. Not a lot of stuff, but every little bit counts, I suppose. Dark. All right. So this was our original base. And we came through. I th think we already got that. This is the new base. Right here. So for now, we're going to explore up this way. See what we can find. I did not notice this on my first walk through here. HVC Reach 2 Tech. What the heck does that mean? Oh. High voltage cable. Looks like that's, that's a ways away. Hmm. We'll get to it at some point. Back to exploration. I want to just take a moment to appreciate this. This is gorgeous. This is beautiful. It's just, wow. All right, let's go. So according to our map here, there's another thing right here. And it looks like there's also some more interesting stuff over there. But first, we're going to dig down and check this out. Uh, I guess I'll just start digging from here. Oh, no. It's using the coolant again. This is going to take a minute. Took me a minute, but I found it. Water wheels. Okay. Hmm. 
I think our next exploration is going to be up in here. Ooh. A little bit of a tight squeeze in here. Beautiful though. So, uh, let's see here. Oh, it's just limestone over here. Okay. A whole bunch of limestone on the other side of this wall and a whole bunch of just stuff everywhere. Next goal is going to be over here. Hmm. Awarded for discovering of the Central Falls area. Got an achievement. This is interesting. Looks like there is a lot of stuff. Looks like there's some kind of facility underground there. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of stuff here. Alright, well, let's poke this a little bit, see what happens. There's like a stairwell up here. Oh, okay. Knock, knock. Anyone home? What is this stuff? Creeping Hydra. Okay. Uh, uh. Oh, here we go found the entrance. Facility access door unavailable. Refer to display panel for self-repair requirements. Okay, uh, monorail track and cooling systems. Okay gonna be a minute before we can get that no other way in let's uh, let's put this exploration on hold for just a minute and see if we can't automate some stuff back at our central base try to make things a little bit easier for ourselves. Let's head out that way. So after I researched Crank Connect, I guess it just took a minute for the things to load. All these cranks are all connected now. I only have to crank one of them and they all crank. That's great. So as you can see here, I'm using the core composer and some scaffolding around it to make sure that uh, it doesn't bump into the roof and I'm getting more cores built and I think it's about time to take a look at the technology tree first let me give you a quick tour of this so I ran some assembly machines and got some cores built and I've been slowly feeding them into this box, which is feeding this, which is going up. And this goes around like this. And then all I need to do whenever it finishes another layer, come up here. And make sure that the next layer above it is gonna be completely clear. Yeah, it's some manual work, but, you know, 
perfection demands attention. Okay, just dropped 25 more cores in. Let's take a look at this thing. Very cool. Still having to crank the generators, unfortunately. Soon. That'll be a problem that uh, will be in the past. While I'm here, I might as well clear a little bit more out of the top, and then we'll take a look at the tech tree. Alright, let's see what we got here. 128 cores. Hmm. Enables flattening mode. Not sure I quite need that yet. Filter inserters. We are 100% going to need these going forward. Got them. And the hover pack. Beautiful. We're definitely going to need these accumulators. Let's see here. 43 more available. Oh uh, yeah, we need these processor units because uh, there's a door that's locked behind 40 of them. So I'm going to get this. And that's where we are now. So let's see what kind of... Uh, see what kind of messages pop up. Task inbound. Filter inserters. Must be configured to transfer materials and products of a selected type. Electrical power required. Cool. Filter inserters are especially critical for machines like threshers that produce both seeds and plant matter. Mm -hmm. You might not want to have different things spitting out to the same line or getting pulled into the same machine. Right. And the filter inserter is going to help you with that. Task inbound. Accumulator. Stores electrical power for delayed distribution. That's it. All right. Let's continue pushing forward. The 3D map view of my core composer. That is a thing of beauty and symmetry right there. Loving it. Okay, well, it's here. Let's take a look at what happens. And the hover pack is built. Uh, equipable tool. So let's move some stuff over here. And equip that right there. see what they have to say. Nothing. <sighs> so, uh, doesn't look like I can hover very high off the ground at all. I mean... It's something. Looks like I can go up about five levels. Not quite as cool as I was hoping it would be, but... It's 
still going to be a benefit now that we're going to start automating things, bringing in all of our ingots and running them through our machines, putting everything on a bus, getting it going. Oh, well, let's go. So I'm back up here by the starting base, kind of scouting things out, figuring out how I'm going to do this. And I run across this, and I'm not sure what it is, so let's check it out. This computer has a requisition for local plant life to be delivered to a science team for analysis. It looks like the request was approved, but doing it was marked as a low priority by command, even though the request itself was marked as urgent. We didn't come here for science, but I don't remember this kind of hostility about it either. What were they doing here? Hmm. Okay. So I'm constrained by output. Let's uh let's make more output. Oop. Belt loader. Awarded for placement of one hundred belts. Nice. Well, let's keep going. So, while I was loading up our core composer here, I noticed that it started kind of growing out the sides. Well, just like that, actually. So, uh... Normally, I don't like to look at guides and things like that. But I did take a look to see what was going on and why. And apparently once this thing gets to a certain height, it kind of turns from a tower into a mushroom. Now, I don't want that. So it looks like this thing gets about 14 layers tall. And then... Uh, yeah, then it starts to mushroom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the last few cores because it, it partially does layer 14 and then stops. And so I'm going to place the last few cores to finish out layer 14 here. And then I'm going to try to get another core composer parked know pretty much right next to it and I'm gonna do this whole scaffolding thing again because I would rather have several core composers kind of next to each other you know maybe it'll look like neat uh, purple glowy skyscrapers what I don't want is the mushrooming because I personally think that it looks untidy uh, if you want to have it mushroom out, that's that's totally valid. You know, if that is your style of play, don't let anybody tell you that you're wrong in the way that you have fun. But just when it comes to me, I want it to be a perfect little skyscraper. And so, and since I don't want to sit here and try to continue stacking it up manually, I'm just going to let it go automatically to a certain level from now on and then sort of do a little bit of manual work to clean it up. As you can see, it's a little dark up here. I have to get the resources necessary to create the lights that I want to put here. Uh, beyond that though, yeah, that's where we're at with Core Composer. Okay, I just wanted to touch on this real quick. 
It looks like I can fit 350 cores into this. And so let's take a look at our tech tree here real quick because there's probably quite a few things that we're going to want to pick up. I'm going to go with this. Uh, well, hold on. First, I'm going to pick up the planter, thresher, biodense 2. This way, the bricks that I make will last longer. Uh, oh, that only leaves me with 18 cores left on this one. Which, uh, looks like I'm going to have to manually place enough cores to get this core composer researched. And then once I get this core composer researched, I'm going to build one and pop another one down and populate that. Well, let's see if we triggered any, uh, any reactions to the research we've done. Task inbound. Planter. Supply with seeds to rapidly reproduce fully grown flora. Electrical power required. Okay. Task inbound. Thresher. Supply with resources to produce a variety of organic goods. Electrical power required. So... This is probably going to get us all of this plant matter that we need. Plant life. Okay, so... Yeah. Planter and thresher are going to be vital to the next steps as we're going to need to... Uh, make a lot of those bricks in order to power a lot of our drills so let's let's get on that warning yune has anti-gravitational weight limit exceeded your suit can only hold so much in a weightless state without slowing you down breaker get to a container and offload a few things as soon as possible I am over encumbered. Awesome. So I am over here in uh, the original base. I've got some stuff that I'm just building, just putting together, just laying out. I'll show that as soon as that's working. But right now, I am taking a look at this planter. It's got 2IO and we are going to see just exactly what we can do with this. Ready for seeds. So let's grow some kindle vine and we'll see what happens. So I ended up planting four kindle vine into this planter and it extracted four kindle vine and so now we're gonna go ahead and build a thresher and load that in there and see what that does all right so here's my thresher I just set it down next to the planter and we're gonna drop four kindle vine into it and just so there's no confusion with my inventory, I'm going to have... Threshing initiated. Oh. Be advised that all generated outputs must be relieved for production without disruption. Okay. So, four Kindle Vine gave us four Kindle Vine seeds and 16 Kindle Vine stems. Okay. So what happens if I thresh the Kindle Vine stems? 
Oh, I can do that. That's going to give me Kindle Vine Extract, Plant Matter Fiber. Okay. So I can't thresh either the Plant Matter Fiber or the Kindle Vine Extract. Let's figure out what we can do with this stuff. Task inbound. Oh. Double threshing. Thresh kind loving to produce kind loving stems. Thresh kind loving stems to produce plant matter fiber. Assemble plant matter fiber into plant matter frames. Well, I guess that's uh, what we're doing. Okay, so this is the quick and dirty design that I came up with. This is really janky, so it's not the final product. It's just a proof of concept. And so let me walk you through it right here. These planters are growing Kindle vine. The Kindle vine is harvested, put into this thresher, and it's split into Kindle vine seeds and Kindle vine stems. The seeds come out on this side and feed the planters so that there is an infinite supply of Kindle vine. The stems come out here and they are threshed again and they create Kindle vine extract and plant matter fiber. The plant matter fiber is pushed out here and goes to these two assemblers. This assembler is making plant matter frames, which I will put on a bus later. This assembler is making plant matter. The plant matter is pushed out here and ends up here. Now the Kindle Vine extract is being pushed into this smelter and is being smelted into limestone. The limestone is also being pushed out here. Now the limestone and the plant matter are being used in this assembler to create bio bricks. At least part of those bio bricks are being bled off to fuel this smelter. So this is a self-perpetuating process. As long as I'm using up everything that it's giving me, it'll continue to go. Now, some of these things would be bled off onto a main bus, as there's just a surplus. Obviously, we are threshing way too many of these stems and we have a surplus of both the extract and the plant matter fiber. I'm gonna have to pull a whole lot more of that. Also, we'll probably want several more smelters so that we can have an overabundant supply of ingredients for our, why can't I select it? There we go, for our assembler. Right now, I think our biggest limiting factor is the speed of our inserters. I think if I add a little bit more belt, you know what, I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to add one more belt and one more inserter and see if that helps a little bit. Because it takes three fiber to make one plant matter. Hmm, that's still not quite keeping up. Well, it'll be a little faster now anyway. And so now we're outstripping our... Uh oh what happened? We're not getting in enough of the Kindle Vine extract. So yeah, I'm definitely going to have to rework this so that it's more efficient with how things are being loaded in. But this is the proof of concept. This is the basics of the machine that I'm going to put in place 
solely in this area at least specifically to produce bio brick to feed smelters and miners now as you can see i've got this little thing going on here we'll have the bio bricks coming in on this line being fed to both the smelters and the miners the miners will be pumping out the raw ore here that will be being smelted here and go out as ingots here i'm gonna do basically the exact same thing over here I just haven't got to it yet. And that's it. And that is how we are going to get ingots onto our bus. But that is going to have to wait until the next episode. This episode is really running long. Uh, yeah, hopefully at the beginning of our next episode... Uh, if anything weird happens, that'll be first, and then I will demonstrate that there is going to be uh, lines running out so that we can start putting together our bus. Uh, I am a believer in a main bus type process. I'm probably going to do... A pretty wide bus and I'm gonna do it single-sided and we are gonna see you know what kind of designs we can come up with and what we can do for those of you who like you know efficient factory designs and all that I would say that the next episode is going to be the beginning of where you are really going to get interested in what I'm doing with this everything up until now has been preparation for the creation of the factory and that is my plan for the next episode until then uh, if you like this video please give me a like I would appreciate it if you would comment and let me know what you liked what you didn't like how I can improve and if you're liking what I'm doing here please subscribe there is definitely more to come I'm trying to put a little bit more production value into things. I'm trying to get a little bit ahead, uh, doing multiple of these episodes at once. Plus, at the same time, I'm doing episodes for other games that I'm going to be sprinkling in and some of my other hobbies at the same time. So stick around. There's definitely going to be more to enjoy, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a good one.